17 days have passed since RuneScape's release, and let's go check what is new in RuneScape on update day of the 21st of January 2001. Drainer Manor has been opened with one new quest to explore the manor, as well as a new desert town called El Carrot. And with this new town comes the new best in slot legs that you can purchase and the new best food. Let's start completing this game update by completing the new quest, Ernest the Chicken. Ernest the Chicken is also a quest that has remained unchanged since its release. Besides then the overhaul on graphics, making it visually clear which doors are locked and which are unlocked when doing the basement puzzle. Also, for some odd reason, originally the skeleton boss under the stairs of the Drain of Mana is not aggressive. So that was an easy escape for me. 300 coins! Yes. I wouldn't say it is a new best in slot. I want a new cape. RuneScape just released a new cape because red isn't really my color. So I'm going to be killing this highwayman for a new black cape. I think that's more my style. Nice. Moving on. In the new town of El Carrot, we have a new general store, which is a new place where we can sell our items. And just adjacent to the general store, we have a plate mail leg shop. And in this, we have a full range of leg armor that we can spend our money on. Also, this is my new best in slot legs, but this is going to cost me 6400 GP if I'm going to be selling my iron play legs, then I will still need like 2700 coins. Now in El Carrot, there's also a silk trader and trading silk is a new money making method. You can buy silk from the silk trader and sell it in Varrock for a profit. The amount of profit you make does depend on how many other players are also selling silk in Varrock. This money making however is really mind numbingly slow and requires a lot of effort for very little GP. So my money making to get the current best in slot plate legs, element plate legs, I'm just gonna continue what I did in the last episode and that was mining iron and making them into swords to sell to the sword shop in Verak. And then there are two more buildings. This is the second furnace in RuneScape and this new furnace is the closest to a mine. But since there are aggressive level 21 scorpions in the El Carrot mine, I am not going to be using it since you basically need to be combat 43 or higher to not get bothered by the level 21 aggressive scorpions. And then the shop just adjacent south next to the furnace is the kebab shop. That is a new type of food in game. Previously, we only had cooked meat and bread. But eating kebabs has a random effect. They're normally good, but rumor has it that few of them are a bit dodgy. They'll never kill you though. So what they mean by that is that kebabs have usually a very high chance that they will heal 10% of your current hit points level. And there's a lower chance that they will heal you between 10 and 20 hit points. And on very rare occasions, the kebab actually damages you. The possibility of a kebab not healing you, but instead damaging you has been removed in RuneScape 2. Now what might be the biggest change is that there's currently a bank in RuneScape and that is the Varrock Western Bank. Now, I have always wondered why was a bank called a bank? Because usually in other games it is called like a storage chest or something. Well, that is because the very first bank in RuneScape, which was released today, can only store your coins. Because currently everyone is playing as an ultimate Iron Man. And the reason to have a bank introduced is to safely store your money, even if you were to die then your money will not be lost that you've gathered for the last couple of days. So I think it's a smart move to stop people from rage quitting after dying just once, so that the players at least have all their money stored at the bank 
So if they were to die, they could maybe start over a little bit more quickly. So, that were all the updates of January 21st, 2001. There's only one more thing before moving on to the next game update, and that is buying my best-in-slot plate legs, which are adamant. So, I'm gonna be spending a few hours mining and smithing to buy those legs. See you in a bit. And so, with just a little bit more mining and smithing and some silk trading, let's trade Louis Legs for the current best in slot play legs. Adamant play legs. And that is it for the update day of the 21st of January 2001. Let's immediately head over to the next game update, which is just in four days. On the 25th, nothing new is added to the game, but instead the super strength beer cheat is fixed. Players were drinking huge amounts of beer to raise their strength levels really high. And then, because PvP was enabled everywhere, they started killing everyone. That is now fixed, so beer only increases your strength just slightly. I cannot showcase this bug because I'm currently playing on a recreated classic server set on May 8th, 2001. What I also cannot recreate is the original smithing tables. Do you find it odd that currently in old school RuneScape, level 30 gear requires levels between 70 and 88 smithing? Well, it could be worse, as before May 8th, 2001, this was the original smithing table. The levels required for bronze is about the same, but iron requires between 15 and 64 smithing to create, and steel between 30 and 99. It would require 99 smithing to make a steel playbody. So to compensate for the new lower required levels to create metal armor, you now instead need to use multiple bars. And that is it for the 25th of January 2001. Let's move on to the next game update, which happens in just two days. Ranged is now 25% faster, and you now gain XP for every successful hit, so you can train ranged faster. Magic damage is also changed, as it no longer is dependent on your range level. Magic spells now, that can deal damage, all have a fixed max hit, and to do more damage, you simply need to cast higher level spells. Also, staffs have been improved, such as if you are wielding an air, water, earth or fire staff, it now acts as unlimited amount of runes of that element. Currently, RuneScape is mainly a PvP game, hence why they have added two new changes. But these two changes also have an impact on PvM. The first change is that you can no longer log out when your character is in combat. And the second change from today, when you die in-game, you will keep your three most valuable items. You will probably still lose everything else, but with your three most valuable items and your spare money in the new bank in Farrock, you should be relatively safe now. And that was it for the 27th, let's immediately head over to tomorrow for the next game update. On the 28th, there is a new village introduced south of the manor but that village is being terrorized by a vampire. This village is currently pretty lacking in things to do. There's no Aggie the Witch, no Ned, there's no jail with guards. Uh, you can basically only start Vampire Slayer quest. So, let's do that quest. To start this quest, we have to speak to a citizen of Drena Village. And this citizen will redirect us to the Vampire Slayer Dr. Harlow, from whom we get a stake, which is needed to defeat the vampire. Go to the basement of the Drainer Manor and defeat the vampire to complete the quest. 
Now I can tell that there are two major differences between 2024 version and the one from 2001. First, Dr. Harlow was originally in the inn north of Varrock. Somewhere in 2004, Dr. Harlow was moved from the Jolly Boar Inn north of Varrock to the Blue Moon Inn in the center of Varrock because newer players had a hard time finding the Jolly Boar Inn and would sometimes wander into the wilderness. There was no wilderness ditch until April 2007, by the way. Those were good times. And the second change is that in RuneScape Classic, you must equip the stake as a weapon to be able to defeat the vampire. If you weren't wielding the stake, then the vampire would just rejuvenate and you will need to fight it again. Be sure that the final damage is done by the stake to complete your quest. And that was Vampire Slayer, the final quest of January 2001. Now, before setting the date of the plugin to February 2001, there is one more game update in January. On the 30th, the Keep 3 Best Items rule from three days ago has been modified. If you now attack another player, you will get a skull above your head for 20 minutes, indicating that you will not keep your three best items upon death. That is done to make PK more dangerous and exciting, else everyone would just be using three items. And that was it for the very first month of RuneScape. In the next video, we are going through the second month and possibly also the third. Okay, thanks, bye.